you know? I'm a simple man. A simple man who enjoys simple things. Like my daily 4 a.m. bath before work. But Mother Nature can ruin even our best laid plans. Like rain during a picnic or a tornado during an anything. Baths, too, can be ruined by that foul mistress. I'm sure you've heard before not to bathe or shower during a thunderstorm. And while it sounds like an old wives' tale, it's actually true. A lightning strike can travel through your metal pipes and into you. Of course, most houses nowadays have PVC piping, but if your house is older, it's a very real electrocution hazard. And if you're bathing in the Amazon or Orinoco rivers, there's another big electrocution hazard. That's right, electric eels, nature's battery. If you grew up watching Spongebob like me, I'm sure you remember how the jellyfish used to shock people. Of course, jellyfish don't actually produce electricity. They have a venom that stings if you touch it. Electric eels, on the other hand, actually generate electricity. They can produce up to 600 volts with the organs they have throughout their body. Now, when you think of being electrocuted, you probably think of something like <laughs> But in reality, it's more like <laughs> That's because the electricity actually attacks the neurons in your brain and forces all of your muscles to tense up. So, any fish unfortunate enough to be near one of these things gets zapped and can't move, giving the eel its chance to swoop in and chomp. That's not the only way to use their electricity. Electric eels live in the rivers of South America, and they can get pretty hard to see in those murky waters. So, they use their lower voltages for electroreception. They put out a constant electric field and monitor any disturbances, allowing them to actually sense their surroundings. They'll also pick up on any electric fields that other fish produce. If they sense a fish, they'll put a quick high voltage shock out, causing their prey to twitch, revealing their position. Then, they'll move in for the kill. They also use electroreception for communication, too. They'll actually detect other eels and then talk to them. Mostly about reproduction, though. Men, am I right? But in groups, they can also work together to defend themselves and take down larger prey. They can take down animals as large as horses by jumping onto them and letting loose electric volleys. This is more effective because doing this makes a circuit. But instead of all that electricity be lost through the water surrounding them, it's now feeding directly into that animal. That's a pretty smart fish. Wow. They are extremely well adapted to their environment. And the murky waters they live in aren't just tough to see through. They're also tough to breathe in. It's not oxygenated very well. So the electric eel has yet another trick up its sleeve. They're actually Air breathers. They have to come up every so often and take a breath of fresh air. And their mouths are especially adapted to this. Their mouths are full of all these little folds that increase the surface area and work as lungs. That's right, they don't have dedicated lungs. Their mouths are the lungs. As a matter of fact, all their major organs are in their heads. Their stomach, liver, all their guts. And their anus is on their chin. The rest of the 80% of their body is just dedicated to producing electricity. Also, they're not actually eels. They're knife fish. Yeah, electric eels are pretty amazing. I'd get one to show you, but I'm pretty sure there's a legal issue with keeping one as a pet, and also, I don't think they'd make very good bath mates. Oh jeez, look at the time, I gotta go to work! I hope you do some research on your own. There's so much to learn about these fascinating creatures, and there's more discoveries happening all the time. Well, thanks for watching. This has been the Variety Educational, with me, your host, Thomas Summers.